Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are looking at converting decimals into fractions. Let's take a look. We That's it. That's all we're doing. We're converting decimals into fractions. Let's get into it. To do this, we have to remember our place values. That's going to be um, an important ongoing theme. So just as a quick recap, if you don't remember where your place values are, I'm going to give us a, um, a quick you know, just run over of that. If you look at the numbers I have here, I use different um, digits there, one, two, three, four, five, and six, to represent the different place values. The first digit on the right of the decimal is the number one, and that's in the tenths column. And then we move on to the hundredths column, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, and millionths, and you probably won't get to this point. Um, but it's good to know that that's where they go, and then it goes ten millionths, hundred millionths, etc., etc. But the point is that these are the place values, and if you know them, it makes it really easy to try and write decimals as fractions. As follows, you'll see the zero point one. If you remember where that is, that is the tenths column. So that means it is one tenth. And that's how we would write it as a fraction, one tenth or one over 10. And that's how this is going to go. It's going to be, I'm going to show you some more complicated examples, but the basics are, are centered around that. If you know the place values, you can write any decimal as a fraction. This one here, try it out. What do you think you get when you have 0.3? That's called three tenths, and it's written as three out of ten. That's it. Let's move along to doing some practice with numbers that have more digits on the right of the decimal. How about this one, 0 0.01? That would be called one hundredth. And it would be written as one over 100, or a fraction with the numerator of one and the denominator of 100. How about this one? Think about that one for a second. Try that out. What do you think that would look like as a fraction? Hmm. Did you say it was 23 hundredths? If you did, you're absolutely right. The way that we look at decimals, and this is important, is that you look at how far does it go to the right and the number that ends in the right that very last digit that's the the place value so this one here it ends on the three so that's in the hundredths column and then you just say whatever number that is hundredths in this case 23 hundredths notice in the previous question it was one hundredth it's the digit one or the number one but it's over in the hundredths place and that's important because in our previous slide we had one tenth. So that zero means something in the first example. Anyway, the way we would write this as a fraction, 23 hundredths, just like that. We're going to move on to thousandths. This one is in the thousandths column, so we would call it one thousandth and write it as one over one thousand as a fraction. So go ahead and try this one out. It's a little bit complicated, but I'm sure you can do it. Remember, the last digit is in the thousandths column, so it will be a fraction out of a thousand. How many out of a thousand? Did you say it was 11 thousandths? If so, you got it right. If not, go back and take a look at this one. It's the number 11, and it ends in the thousandths place. So we're going to get um, one step more complicated. Each slide has been one step more complicated. So here's the next one. If I had this number, 0 0.002, what is that? How would I say it, first of all? I would say two thousandths for that one. There's two and it ends in the thousandths column, so it would be two thousandths. Now the problem with this 
is that now we're dealing with fractions that are not in lowest terms. And you might have known this was coming, but all fractions should be written in lowest terms. So we're going to simplify this fraction. Instead of being two thousandths, it will be one five hundredth. And we do that by dividing the top and bottom by two. Two divided by two is one. One thousand divided by two is five hundred. That's our two is our greatest common denominator. If you need a refresher on simplifying fractions, that's not the point of this lesson, but that's definitely something you'll need to know how to do if you're going to move forward, because the rest of these ones are going to require that you simplify fractions. Here is one. I want you to take a look at it. Try to simplify that fraction. Three, two, one, go. If you wrote it out in words, you would have said it's 15 thousandths. And we would have written that as 15 over 1,000. When you simplify this, the greatest common factor is 5. And when we divide both the top and bottom by 5, we get a fraction of 3 over 200. That's our simplified fraction or our fraction in lowest terms. Couple more practice ones. Try this one out. 0 0.12. It's 12 hundredths, which is written as 12 over 100 and simplified to 3 over 25. Our greatest common factor in this case is 4. So we're dividing the fraction 12 divided by 4, 100 divided by 4. If you divided by 2 and you got 6 over 50, that's a good step of simplifying this fraction, but 6, 6 and 50 would also have a common factor of 2. So our greatest common factor in this case was 4. So that one was a little bit tricky. All right, try this one out. Very similar to our last example, this is 0 0.115. That is 115 thousandths, which is written as 115 over 1,000 or simplified down to 23 over 200. Again, we've got a little bit of a complicated um, situation here, right? We've got some complicated fractions going on, but they follow the same exact rule. You look at the number, look at the farthest number to the right, that is your place value. That's going to tell you whether it's hundredths or thousandths or tenths or whatever. And then, and then the rest just falls into place. Just write the number in the numerator and simplify it. Now we're going to go to the ten thousandth spots. That's when you have four numbers on the right of the decimal. This is getting to the point where you're doing stuff you might not do. You might not be asked to actually simplify fractions that are this complicated. So I'm kind of hoping that I'm taking it to a level that will prepare you for anything that you would see in class as far as simplifying fractions. So this is, this is pretty complicated. The way that we would say this is 2,302 ten thousandths. I'm not going to write that one all out because I just don't have room. But I am going to write it as a fraction. And there it is, 2,302 out of 10,000 or over 10,000. For this one, we simplify it down. The greatest common factor in this case is 2. So we just divide the top and bottom both by 2 and you're left with 1,151 over 5,000, or 1,151 five thousandths. Here's another one for you. I like the number 115 today, I guess. Go ahead and solve that one. Try it out on your own. See what you get. Go, go, go. Did you get 115 out of 10,000, or 115 ten thousandths? If so, excellent. Our greatest common factor in this case is again five, and that's where it simplifies down to 23 two thousandths. So make sure to remember the place values are important. Take some time to remember what the place values are, and that will definitely serve you well. 
and simplify fractions in every time you can. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.